All right, welcome. This is Mr. Scott, and uh, I'm going to walk you through Graham's Law of Effusion. Uh, just to cover the two terms, effusion and defusion, just to make sure you understand the difference. Effusion is where a gas uh, is able to effuse out of a single hole, a small hole, and effuse and spread out. Um, and then diffusion is where you have a high concentration of gas particles and they diffuse to a lower concentration. So today we're going to be looking at Graham's Law and I'm going to show you uh, the lab procedure that we're going to do and some of the safety concerns that there are with this. Uh, as you took a, take a look at your lab, these are the two pages that go hand in hand in your packet um, and you'll be using those as we fill out the lab, as we go through the lab. So uh, what's some of the equipment? Some of the equipment, we have a long glass tube here with two open ends to allow the gas uh, to travel down. We have a meter stick, which we're going to use to measure the distance that the gas travels. Uh, some of the dangers, some of the concerns we have, and I want you to be of uh, utmost careful uh, with this, this is concentrated ammonia. So um, you want to be very careful with that. That is 15 molar. And then we have 12 molar concentrated hydrochloric acid. So those are two uh, big safety concerns I want you to be aware of. We have some uh, markers here that are washable so you can write right on the glass tube. We have a couple of corks. One is red and one is black so that you know which uh, gas is which. Now some of you are saying, hey, why are we using two liquids um, when we're going to be talking about gases? Just like when you spray uh, perfume or cologne on your, your skin, um, one of the things that it automatically does is it changes to a vapor and then travels across the room or, or diffuses from a high concentration on your skin to a low concentration somewhere else. So that's going to happen very similarly here. We're going to take a cotton swab and we're going to put a couple of drops of the concentrated ammonia and concentrated hydrochloric acid and then they're going to travel and turn into a gas and travel down the tube. And we'll have a bit of a race. And so what I'd like you to do now is, knowing little or nothing about Graham's Law, in the race, do you think that HCl is going to win the race or do you think NH3 is going to win the race? So I'll give you a moment to take place your bets, okay? So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and take the cork, take the Q-tip, Place that inside there so that it's not going to fall out. Take the other Q-tip, place it inside of it. We're going to take it. This is where you want to be careful. Goggles, safety goggles on. Uh, you're going to take this cap off. Now you want to be careful. Even the fumes uh, could cause some harm. You want to take the concentrated lid off there of the ammonia. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and put a couple drops. You will start to smell some fumes. Don't do this close to your nose, you're doing it away from the body. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a few drops of it. Let's do, oops, I missed there. One, two, three, sounds good. And then one, two, three of the hydrochloric acid. One, two, three. So I've got three drops of each. Put the caps back on so that nobody's gonna harm themselves. And then this is really key. Uh, knowing which end you put which stopper in. So the red end, I'm going to put the hydrochloric acid, and the other end, I'm going to put the NH3. I want to do it at the, relatively the same time, so they start at the same time for the race. So as best I can, I'm going to put them in at the same time. If you have a partner, they're going to do help you out with that. So now I've got the Q-tips, one in that end, one in that end, and what's happening here is the gases are diffusing from a high concentration to a low concentration and they're relatively clear liquids and uh, clear vapors but when they meet they're going to form a white vapor and you're going to look on the tube and keep rotating the tube until you see a white cloud that forms now a lot of you will ask am I done yet am I done yet where's the white cloud keep spinning the tube you'll eventually see a white cloud where they meet so you just got to and you can always have this marker ready. So if you think you see a white cloud, go ahead and mark it. If, uh, if it turns out that it's not a white cloud, it's just a smudge, and you notice a white cloud later, it's not 
very hard to just wash that off. So just keep spinning the tube, spinning the tube until you notice a white cloud forming. So you're going to keep going. Notice it's taking a minute or two here for the vapors to meet each other. And also notice that I'm timing this with a stopwatch. So you don't want to forget, you know, you can have one of your group mates be the timer to make sure you get the time so you know where the, uh, where the cloud is going to form. All right, keep going, spinning it here. All right, still don't see the white cloud. Also, if you're out in lab, you could use a black surface. If you find uh, the black lab tables are often help you find the white cloud, so you can spin it, spin it, spin it. All right, let's see. Hopefully, should be about time here. And waiting here. Don't see anything just yet. Turning it. Still looking. Got a couple of smudges here. All right. Well, no. So I've got my marker ready. In case I see anything. And great. I finally got a little bit of a white cloud here for me. So I'm going to go ahead and mark what I think is the cloud forming between the two. So I've made a little mark with my pen. You can always call your teacher over, I'm sure you will, uh, and ask if that's truly the white cloud. It's a little uh, tough on the iPad here for you to see. But bottom line is then I would take my meter stick and measure from the Q-tip's edge, okay, to where I made my mark and get the total distance traveled by the hydrochloric uh, acid and get the total distance traveled by the ammonia and then basically see who was faster and then we'll take a look at Graham's law of effusion and figure out if it's what we expected. Uh, Graham, he states that the rate that they travel is proportional to the molar masses of both gases. So if we were to compare the square root of the molar masses of both of those gases, uh, then I could get an idea of who is faster. Basically the heavier gas will travel slower, uh, but at a rate that is of uh, that is proportional to the square root of their molar masses. Okay, So hopefully uh, it, that helps out a little bit. One thing I do want to caution you is when you're ready to clean up, you want to clean up, you don't want to take these off right away. You want to do this in the hood. Um, taking these off in the hood is a key, so that way you're not going to get any of these vapors. So you take these off in the, in the hood. There will be a waste container. It will tell you if it's the HCL waste container. That's where the Q-tips are going to go, right in that container. And then you can rinse the tube with a little bit of distilled water. And then Mr. Mott and Mr. Scott will probably advise you, and I'll advise you, to put a little bit of paper towel in through the tube and slide it on down so that we get that tube nice and clean and smudge free for the next class. Uh, make sure you don't put this on the edge of the table so it's going to roll off. Use the meter stick there to stop it from rolling off the desk so that's ready to go for the next group. Make sure your caps are on and you're good to go. Thank you.